myself as a simple boom town, nothing more and nothing less than that. I don't listen to podcasts really, so I didn't really know what I was walking into, but it was much easier and we kind of had it laid out how we were supposed to do it. If we read a nonfiction book called Fire and Brimstone that Michael Punk wrote, uh, we paired that with Nora Sachs' podcast called Richest Hill. I think editing was probably my favorite part because we did that for two days with the Montana Media Lab, so that was pretty fun. The big mining companies pretty much own all of you. I learned that more than, I think a few of my students have connections to the mining days. So they were able to interview, like Alex interviewed his grandfather, so I didn't realize they still had connections to the mining pit. You would think that because of the diversity and all the cultures working together in the mines, that you would be very progressive. In some ways, this was very true, but in a racial sense, not so much. When workers went on strike, the mines need a way to divide oh the strikers and <laughs> bring groups back and keep the mine operation. They try to divide them by their culture. For example, saying slander about the fence to bring Irish back. The strikes got so bad for the National Guard and had to come to town. It was nice to hear what like everyone's thoughts were and how we all got told like that we can pick kind of from these options and everyone went in their own direction of it. So I thought that was really cool. David worked in mines for a little over 12 years before he experienced a career and a Yeah, I still don't like my own voice. <laughs> Forcing them to uh, be the experts who needs to work. Um, I think because they could incorporate what they learn into their own work. Um, papers, I think, get really formulaic. Or... Yeah, assistive maybe. Some students have outside assistance, and I just wanted to have them make something of their own.